Party Sanitizer, and we are back here with the homie. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Rob, aka Anomaly. You know how I do. The other homie, Chris. I am Toys. And uh, I gotta say, I think this is the first time all the horror community YouTubers are in one video. Yeah. This is this is like yeah, really intense, and it was cool that we got everything to Cheers, line up. Cheers, motherfuckers! Cheers. That's yeah. right. <laughs> so as you guys can see, we have part four galore. See, I can rhyme. And you'll uh, never see these many part fours in one place ever again. No, we, we're just addicts. And uh, so this is kind of what we're going to be doing. We just wanted to bring the different flavors that the horror community has to offer with this specific character. So as you guys know, we have a Once Customs right here in the middle, and we have two Beatles from the original Part 4 run. Now the one on the right is Chris's, and he has the expansion sh expansion set with the damage uh, sculpt and the machete, right Chris? Yep. And I have just the regular, and then this is my Once Customs Part 4. And we just kind of want to talk about these pieces and just bring you our our flavors, what we think about it. So I think we're gonna start off with the boots, right guys? Yeah, let's start off with the boots, guys. You guys know I have that boot fetish. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Beto, as you guys know, he always has the sculpted boots, uh, never sourced, AKA eBay. Um, and <laughs> I mean, they're great on this uh, on this application. Uh, they're very movie accurate. Um, the Once Customs boots, um, our source, but they are heavily, heavily modified and shaven down. He added some sculpting on the bottom for the soles and weathered and dirt and grind and all that. So I appreciate both applications and I love them both equally. It's really a preference. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, I believe, I, I think I would agree with you for the most part. Um, there, there's definitely some, some differences in, in between uh, both of the Beto Par 4s. Uh, like my mask, for instance, is, is a little, little bit looser than Dan's. Um, I think my, my number, I think I'm 11 of 30, and Dan is 12. 12 or 30. Yeah. So it's interesting. I mean, obviously the masks are probably all done together and whatnot, so you know, there's probably no rhyme or reason to, to why you know, one following the other might be looser. But my mask specifically, it, it is actually a little bit looser. It's, it's harder to kind of sit in place. It's not as tight. Now the um, string, the string behind is what's the yeah, loose part yeah, of you it. Yeah, because I can see it right but now. It takes a little bit of futzing around, but it sits, you know, it still sits all right. Uh, there's some variation as far as differences in the shoes too. Uh, my, my shoes have a little bit more weathering I noticed compared to some of the other par fours. Yeah. Um, and then obviously ones as par four is going to be unique to itself um, because right. again he, he completely removed the sole from it and then modified it. Uh, but all around they, they all look good. Um, you, you know we, we're, we're not here to, to put out and claim winners. Uh, we're here to kind of talk about the differences because artists excel um, at their own little niches, you know, right. um, and I'll let whoever else wants to kind of throw it in after that. I mean, I honestly, if we're, if we're going to be talking about the boots specifically, I love that the boots are, on Beatles are, you know, are just sculpted obviously <coughs> all by hand and all that, but the fact that one's customs, I really appreciate it, is you can make something that's not supposed to look like that, look like what it's supposed to be in the end. He has a right. dream, he has a goal, and he can make that vision come alive. And the weathering, you, come on, the Once Customs weathering just pops in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Once Customs stuff always has that lifelike factor. And again, it's all it's all preference. Like, do you want your stuff to, to look like it's alive or do you prefer kind of a more, right. you exactly. know, uh, refined, um, I, I, what's a better word for retail? I mean, I got me in trouble last time. <laughs> <laughs> let's, go, uh, let's go Costco, not Walmart. Yeah, let's go Costco. <laughs> you, know, we, uh, you know, we just kidding, guys. But um, yeah, so I'm anyway, take offense. it's all preference, but, um, but again, um, I I like both applications. I appreciate both for what they are. So that's my two take on the boots. Well, what do you think about the pants, Chris? If if we were to move up, like I can even notice, like our two part four pants are a little bit different in variation. I'd say just a little bit until now. Yeah, yeah, yeah there are differences. Like um, I think, just like with the shoes, the differences are you know some have a little bit more weathering on them than others. And you know, folks do have to remember that these are custom pieces. So from right. so from shoe to shoe or pants to pants, you know there are going to be some changes. Obviously, you know some people are going to get. Um, a little, a little more or a little bit less. Um, like I know Robert, Robert has uh, on his part four, which is not pictured here. Um, this may have been ju just uh, a random mistake, or it, it may have just been uh, who knows on purpose, uh, just to have a varied uh, set. But his uh, machete, Rob, I don't think yours has blood on it, from, from what I understand, right? Yeah, yeah, my machete is from the uh, updated run, one of five. Yours is from the right. uh, set, so I guess technically that's to be expected because it's not from the same yeah. run. But yeah, it would have been nice to have that little detail. Yeah. But I guess it's a variation in that regard. I mean, all variations could happen from any artist in any runs. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, like one's customs because I have a little bit of variations, like the part eight's a little different. Pool. 
Yep, yeah, exactly. Like that's when you're dealing, them, yeah. That's what makes them unique. You know, that's the whole thing. Like it's hand mm -hmm. done stuff. It's not a machine pumping exactly. this stuff out. And contrary to popular belief, like a lot of people will say that uh, Beto doesn't do weathering at all to any of his figures, but that's actually not true. He he actually does. Uh, but the but the thing is, is you have to put it on the right light. Like if you guys go, like I don't think I have it up on my Instagram, but there's a, a photo that I posted in the group. So anybody that's in SSG or 16R or whatnot, if you go in there and look at that part four picture that I have, you can see the weathering in the shirt that he has there. And tonight, um, I don't know when this video is going to be uploaded, but later tonight I'm going to put up my part four review and I actually really zoom in on the shirt so you can actually see the weathering on Beto's, uh, on Beto's shirts. It's just a little lighter. Which is a specific set. That exactly. But, but depending on the lighting, like, like from you guys, the way you're looking at the figures, you know, from on this video, you guys probably don't see it, obviously. You know, one's is a little bit more um, kind of overt, it, it pops out more, but contrary to what some people will say about Beto's pieces, you know, that oh, they're too clean or they, they don't have weathering. They do. You, you, you just have to have the right lighting to kind of put it on it. So I just wanted to kind of squash that a little bit because they're, they're, they're... Well, look at his name. His name is weathered to yeah. the Lord. I mean, that's a straight <laughs> Yeah, yeah but, Beto really made a statement with Nate. Were you going to say something? But, I mean, this is uh, really what I love. I think the Once Customs Camp tailoring on this set has stepped up drastically. Oh, I'm not saying that like it was bad before, but right. th this sh this shit on a whole nother level, I think. I agree. Like, yeah, uh, Beto don't ever have any hesitations. If there was ever none, there ain't none now. Yeah, That's Beto, what I'm saying. Beto has his interpretations of, of the proportions. One has his. Right. But when you're looking at them, too, obviously the poses are going to make a difference, too. Because if you look at right. Dan's and you look at one's, like from this angle where I'm at looking at both of them, the proportions are actually... A, pretty close to each Comparable. other. So, so again, it shows yeah. you just how good these artists are, you know, between both of them, where, where they're able to kind of really fucking form, uh, you know, modify these things and, and get the shit right. And, and it kind of actually blows me away right now sitting here because the angle that I'm looking at on the par four and uh, and, and one's par four, the, the silhouettes are, are, are very similar. Obviously on mine, it's not because like, the pose is different, but right. um, on the, the left two, it's actually quite similar. And what do you think about well, the cool well, tailoring? I think, like uh, Dan said, I agree with the tailoring has significantly stepped up. Not that it was bad before, but it's definitely stepped up. One thing I appreciate about one's tearing uh, in particular is that you never get like a high waterish situation. Um, I'm a personally not a big fan. Prepare of, for the flood, motherfucker! <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Me personally, it's just my preference. I don't like uh, pants that are too wrinkled or have like permanent creases and folds. And except stuff for like the party. That. Except for like the, <laughs> except for the party or something where it's artistically done deliberately like that, whereas where the clothing is just simply like that for no reason whatsoever. So there's a difference between uh, an intention and it just being that way. So one's piece really excels in that area. I noticed that with the part fours from Beto's, I've seen about, no, well, today now, six of them in hand. Right. Some of them, the pants are a little too tight. Some of them, the pants are too loose. Some of them, uh, a little bit more high waterish than others. So I don't know if they were done like in separate batches. You got to give Jason some room for the balls, man. You got <laughs> to give him You got to give him You got to balls to kill as many people as he has, you know? <laughs> So, so that, so that's a that's a nitpick of mine. Obviously, these two Jasons that you guys see here don't have that problem. Uh, the pants have a nice bagginess and a nice flow, and they sit very right. well along with the ones piece. So, uh, but um, preference wise, I, I think it's up to the person. Um, but I really am impressed with the tailoring from ones. That's one thing that ones has always nailed is baggy pants, like just yeah. giving that that oh, yeah. natural flow. From like his Freddies to the two yeah. Myers, like that's the one thing that like I love. But when Beetle lands a pant. It, it's very accurate. Yeah, very like that Freddy 2 uh, DX set that I have right now, very freaking accurate. Yep. But just the ones has that flow pattern and that just, it just, it just, it just, it just jives with real life, in my opinion. You know right. what I'm saying? Exactly. Again, we, it comes back to those differences that we keep talking about as far as, you, you know, between right. the pieces. They're all fantastic. Um, and, and what we always try to hammer across, and I've mentioned it in my reviews too, we're trying to show you guys that we're not biased and that we, we, we can review figures and still be kind of official ones reviewers and still collect other pieces and, and review other pieces and compare them and not be fucking scumbags about it. Right. You know what I mean? We, we, we can give love to all the artists because that's why we're in the hobby. We love all the inter interpretations. As I know Rob does, he has one of the best collections I know of. And uh, I just... But I, also very, but also very. I collect all ours. I have a huge. I have almost every Beto catalog piece. I have a lot of ones. I have a lot of Rain Man. I have uh, I Mini Me. K John. K. Well, no K John. Yeah, I gotta get a K John. But yeah, so we love them all. We all we all collect various artists. So we're not particular towards one artist. Now this is what I kind of want to drive home is uh, I like. Uh, I really want to talk about like the. 
presentation of these sets, which is where, you know, you, you can get more bang for your buck. I'll, I'll put it to you this way. With one set, you're going to get two head sculpts. It's going to have that machete effect, and uh, you're going to get a die with it, and uh, that's really, really good. With Beto, you had to buy the expansion set. And now, what was it, 500 retail? Yeah, there are, those are a, that's a significant <laughs> difference than like what Dan is talking about right now. You, you will sometimes tend to have to buy the, the uh, expansion pack, sometimes it's called, um, with Beto pieces, where once pieces will generally come with those things. Sometimes things will get added, but you know Dan's right as, as far as what he's chatting about. And then the price, um, yeah, it's about 500. Yeah, yeah. So 450, 500 for, for those expansion packs. H40, for example, if you did the expansion pack, I think it was somewhere from like 550 to 650, somewhere around there. If you, yeah. if you had the expanded edition, like the, any of you guys who saw my video, the, the expanded set comes with the extra body. You still get both heads. Um, I think that was somewhere around an extra six, seven hundred bucks, maybe somewhere around there. Right. And then the it's regular advanced set that Dan had, that was around like eighteen or nineteen hundred. Right. If you got the additional pieces with it. Right. Right. And what do you think about the presentation was? I think, again, once in every facet, from the tailoring to the presentation to just the overall quality of the figures has gone up significantly. Uh, Beto's has always had like a great presentation. You have the, the uh, box, the custom COA. Uh, Beto has recently done a change with his uh, presentation in terms of the box. I think the COA is staying the same. Um, I'll reserve my opinion until I actually see it in hand, but I will say that I'm not happy about it initially because I felt the other box was perfectly fine. With the Frankenstein? Uh, yeah, I think the Frankenstein is going to be the first. Uh, now, did, is he getting like an insert for the inside of the box and just the outer box is black? Did we get any It's not even about that. It's just that the original box had R360 around the whole right. box. See, now, hey, I agree with this, because, and I actually talk about this in my part four review, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I actually yeah. talk about it, so I share Rob's uh, uh, opinion on this. Distaste. <laughs> yeah, distaste for it, because it, it, it adds something unique to it. And, and, and trust me, I, I, I understand that having the do the box art and, 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 what, and whatnot for Beto. That's just another step and it's probably tedious as shit to be able to do it, where it's probably easier to just have one blanket fucking custom, you know. It's one of Beto's staples yeah, in his releases. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know, Beto, if you're watching this, I, I wouldn't do it. Bring I, it I, back! Yeah, I, I would Well, the thing is, the you can't art, really man. compare it's, a 360 uh, uh, high quality custom art uh, to just kind of like just a single picture being on the box regardless of how good the quality is so again I'll reserve what I really think until I see it but I mean I do know or at least I was given some indication that this was done as a cost-saving measure and I feel like at the, I'm gonna just keep it real guys at the price point that we're paying for these custom figures I don't think there should be any cost costing measures we're paying two thousand dollars plus on average for these figures so shots fired that's yeah. basically my gripe but going back with the presentation Beto has generally always had a great presentation one's not exactly I mean in the past you weren't getting COAs you weren't getting right. boxes um, but he stepped up the presentation ever since Paul came in you get the whole oh yeah that was a whole different situation I think value wise the value is really difficult to beat now with ones because you know the figures uh, projects are ranging from as low as 1600 with the dial to as high as 3000 with a very exotic dial multiple heads weapons accessories whereas with um you know beto you're still getting you know a ton of accessories and stuff too but you're not getting a dial and you're not getting um you know the h40 i think was the most feature rich uh, right. set that he's done probably ever so i well, get now the frankenstein i think no, I still think H40 in terms of a the little bit more. Yeah, I don't know, H40, you got the pen, you got the tombstone, you got the pumpkin, you got the light. I don't know the the part three, Jason. Man, you have everything together. Woo, that's a lot of shit right there. But now. Alex has got to be in the picture. Yeah, now, which that's is not. Thing, yeah. yeah, just yeah, for a, a, for, a, for, a, for a single release, just from Beto did, himself. Yeah, yeah. That's to my recollection. Because right. the part three, you had to order things. Because even Alex offered different packages. Like even the part six had a lot though. Yeah, part With six. The jewel yeah. bodies. That yeah. one was uh, on that level. We're so back. bottom line, when you guys are making a purchase or a conscious uh, decision on what you guys want besides the things that we talked about so far, you definitely got to factor in presentation and both at this point have great presentations. I am going to give a little bit of the value edge to one's customs though, in my opinion. Now this is what I really want to talk about. The accessories and <clears throat> then um, let's talk about the hands because there's a very big variation in the hands. Now these are modified hands but they look Sculpted. Yeah, they're fantastic. Yeah. These are pure sculpted, but if you put stuff in them, they can break. Yeah. That's like, that's the scary thing. Yes, it is. This is why I really love what he did here. 
because they are so modified and it's so sculpted over that it legit looks sculpted, but if you move it, it's not cracking. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Like what Dan's talking about, like specifically, even with the part fours, I, I can even say some, again, the differences that we're talking about between artists, like you can see like on, uh, on the hands that Beto has, you can see the little cast uh, marks or where the separations the are. Thumb. You got it. So when you're trying to fit, like for for perfect fucking example, you know, putting that that uh, that axe in, into his hand, you gotta be a little bit careful because uh, you, you, like we'll, we'll use Hot Toys hands for for an example. Those hands are pretty pliable, so you can kind of fit things in. It's not an issue. With this, you gotta be careful because if you if you probably you push it in too much, you're, you're gonna fucking sh separate the fucking hand. You're gonna be super gluing. Yeah, there's your devaluing of your set. You know exactly. That, so. that it, it's paint chipping, just losing parts, repaints, or just fucking anything. You're 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 fucked. That let's just put it that way. You're fucked. I feel safer with my investment here, but this is not, it's not really a comparison, but it's just a preference thing for me. I just, I don't want to be afraid to pose my figures. One guys. thing I want to add to what both of you guys said that is a problem, like for instance, I have an Ash, original Ash from Beto, half the body is turning a different color. And one thing about, I that one, yeah. one thing about once, um, I will say, I don't know what kind of fucking paint he uses, but you that can throw magic that, marker. You can throw that <laughs> shit against the wall and the shit just doesn't paint chip. Whereas with Beto stuff, because it's fully casted or fully sculpted or whatever, and the paint techniques and all that are just a little different. I don't know if he uses as much paint. It looks great, but I just noticed that things are chipping easier, much yeah. easier, and things yeah. paint a lot easier. So again, not, this is not to knock Beto or anybody. The point of mentioning this is that you just got to be careful. You got to know what you're dealing with. So you got to think a little bit more twice when you're posing your figures right. with accessories. A little bit more with Beto than you do one. Well, as Chris knows, because he was a, an amazing Hot Toys collector, still is, just like the BVS Batman or, or like the Robocop rubber scenes, you know, exactly. it's made of a certain material, so it deteriorates over time. Exactly. Uh, with customs, we take a little bit more care. Sometimes we don't nail it, but 99% of the time, it's just, you, you got to expect a little bit of something. Time, nobody can beat Father Time. Right. Remember that. Father Time is always the unbeatable truth. Right. Really? Okay. But here, here, here's where I want to really talk about. Accessories, guys. What do you guys think of the the quality and accessories from Beto, and then quality that we got over here? I mean, just keeping it real and keeping it honest, um, Beto has some of the best accessories in the game. He does. Um, mm -hmm. I don't. I think sometimes more can be included, but I will give him Beto credit that in the Part Six release and the H Forty release, and maybe with some upcoming releases, the accessories are looking pretty good. You know what I gotta say. The accessories on Beatles are amazing. The ones on ones are amazing too, but what I like about it, say if we were comparing things to it, is just the weathering that goes into the accessories and the yeah. blood. Like, nobody can be one's customer's blood. I mean, yeah. let, let, no, one's let's, has the best let's, blood let, let's talk about that one. The, the lifelikeness that one's brings to the table is fucking exactly. just stupid good. And you guys have probably heard me say this a hundred times in my reviews of one pieces nobody does grit and grime and gritty paint apps like once customs nobody i mean look at the party yeah. uh pictures you just exactly. released the one it's in a different like, i legit when i scrolled down i was like what the yeah fuck? i was like that was i was like oh that's the figure that yeah. chris has i was like oh my and god the awesome thing is like lighting like i mentioned this in one of my recent posts i was like you you like this thing differently and it fucking looks like a different figure every time you know, yeah. so it's like you have five figures in one. It's interesting you mentioned that it, because once pieces react better with detoff lighting than Beto's pieces. Almost they do. Tenfold. With this one, if yeah. you put this part four in a different lighting, it, it, it kind of, it's due to some of the gloss, maybe in rain scenes or whatever, whatnot. Yeah. It, and then if you put it on a little bit of a harsher light, it just won't right. bounce off. It's, right. it's, you have a lot of playability with it. You can, right. it's just... Exactly. You have such an amalgam of ways that you can do it, and the posability is a little bit better at the same time. I'm always scared to pose beetle pieces. I'm not gonna. Lie. I'm scared. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. because they're tough. worth so much, and, and the, the the retail uh, the aftermarket value goes high, but it's so easy to just break it. Yeah, like. And again, we're not knocking anybody. Folks. No, you know, it, it's, no. It's just it's all more you know yeah. handmade, so it's a little bit more ginger. Exactly. You know? Same thing with Hot Toys figures. You get Hot Toys <clears> figures depending on the figure you fucking get. One's gonna be more weathered than the other. You know, you get a bow damage figure. You get a regular figure. They look different in different lights. Uh, I have Hot Toys figures that I won't fucking take pictures of them in details because they don't fucking look right. Uh, yeah. You know, same thing with my custom pieces. There are some certain custom pieces I won't fucking take a picture of in a detail because the fucking lighting makes it look like shit. Or, or you won't pose like the Spider-Man suits. You know, they exactly. Leave, exactly. Leave them you're gonna, fucking rip, you're gonna rip the goddamn fabric. They, you, you know, know? They're, they're feisting bodies. You can't leave them bent for long periods of time. The Hellboy like, body from uh, the original Hot Toys. Exactly. That, that, that got so destroyed. some of these same things, like, like you can see we're saying, they carry over. So there's Different, like again, there's there's similarities and differences between everything. All these are bangers, uh, and all these are must-haves. 
It's just what your preference is. Yeah. Now, as we move up, we obviously have, uh, we talked about the tail, we have the head sculpt, and then we're gonna go into the mask. Now, the head sculpt, I'm not gonna lie, I think Beto's head sculpt is accurate, more accurate, but the lifelike factor, which is something that just keeps coming up in this conversation, but the lifelike factor that once has is just, would you, you know? Yeah, I mean, I agree. The, um, I'm, I'm a, uh, I think Beto's nailed the, the head sculpt. Absolutely. Yeah, I think Beto's head sculpt, you're right. right. It's yeah, just, yeah, it's in terms of the accuracy, I think the, the shape and everything. But again, going back to one's pieces, uh, paint applications are very, very lifelike and uh, they react better to light. So they, it just pops out a little bit uh, better. But again, it's totally preference. I like them both personally. I own, well, I don't own the ones, but I'm getting one soon. So I got to have both representations. Well, you own it. You're on the run. You own it. Yeah, I'm on the run. It's your spot. You own Right. Yeah. So I got to have I both. I am as well. So waiting for mine. Ones, if you're watching this, come on, man. I, I mean, just. <laughs> I'm the only one that got both. Right? Woo! So the fact that. All three of us essentially have Beto's and, and ones. ones. Tells you yeah. something right exactly. there. Exactly. <laughs> we love both of these artists. Exactly. Right. Let's not play. So I love them both. Yeah. Um, and what do you think, Dan? What it was? Like I said, I uh, logistically like the hair. It, it, it's give and take. It's mm -hmm. fine. What? It, it, ask yourself: Are you in here for the accuracy? Are you here for um, the artist perspective? Yep. Yep. Artist interpretation. Right? Are you here for life like grittiness? What are you here for? I There's want an it artist. All. I want it all. That's why we have Cash, it all. money, First rings, cool. diamonds, something, something, something. Orange said that. <laughs> well, that's why we have all the interpretation from the artist. But. <laughs> So yeah, because people always ask that. Why you gotta have those? Why, why are you greedy motherfuckers gonna have three of one thing? Why can't we? You know? Well, yeah, exactly. Life why. is too it's short to limit yourself, so why not just exactly? Fucking have and, them and all? as you can see, these are not the same pieces. Obviously, you know they vary. You have ones' interpretation, you have Beto's interpretation, how they see the figure, and, and, and they're both fucking awesome. Which is why I, I, I can't wait for the ones part four, and, and, and there's probably gonna be a comparison review. You're gonna see that from. From Rob, from fucking me, from Dan, and, and, and all I think three. We're of us. doing it right now. Yeah, and a fucking three musketeers here, man. Uh, uh, you know, so it, it's uh, you know, actually it's four. If Paul was here, but Paul is uh, he, he's busy, man. So you guys that are waiting for Dio's, you know, and think he's not fucking working, he, he is. is working. So one, one of the reasons why he's probably not here today is because he's working on your fucking Dio. So leave him the hell alone, you motherfuckers. <laughs> one thing I'll say about Beto's uh, head sculpts, which I gotta give him props for, is that he does the best teeth and gum work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, that I've seen on any head sculpt from pretty much any artist yeah, to this day that I can think of. The teeth and the gums, like if you look at his part six Jason, if you look at even his part four Jason, you look at his Freddy two, um, whatever application it is, the mouth and the gums always look phenomenal, especially on Fluffy. Um, so I kudos to that and. Um, Ones is good too. He's gotten a lot better, and I think it was a. Um, I like with the part four sculpt that he kind of recessed the mouth back, meaning that the black area inside of his mouth is more pushed back, so it actually looks like there's a hollowness inside. He did of that his with mouth. the part eights too, right? Um, yeah, he did. Okay. He did. I think that's the new style that he's going with. So, like, yeah. Um, another th a factor that I want to bring up before we talk about the masks, because uh, this is huge for me, and this is an area that I think one equally is good at it. like i talked about beto with the gum and the teeth this other area is proportioning now when i started in this hobby you know i to my recollection no one was talking about proportions before i was so it was just something that and i get why that was happening because back then you had figures coming like from beto and other artists where the figures were more mainstream and more uniform because it was a process whereas with ones everything is a one-off so naturally, you have to pay, at least back then, you had to pay more attention uh, to how these figures were built, actually. And when it comes to body uh, structures and proportions, um, one is Fences. one is a master at this. And um, and Beto's good, too, because he captured the Part 3 very well. He captured the H40. I think the H40 is the that best. That was perfect. That was perfect. H40 was is perfect. the best built perfect. Myers figure, perfect. hands down, I've ever seen. Other than the original 78 that I got, that, that shit is fine, oh, too. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to drop that one. But um, but in terms of these figures, because this is what we're talking about, um, I um, I really like the way that one tackled the, the overall structure. Is it as accurate as the, the less stockier, less build structure that Beto's has? Uh, that that's up to the beholder's eye, but I really like what he did. What do you guys think? So guys, um, so what do you guys feel about uh, how these figures are built? Because I think this is very, very important. And I feel like 
I don't know, for some reason, a lot of people don't really talk about it, or I don't even know if they don't care. Or like, I think you were the first one that brought it into the hobby, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I think proportioning is very important because it's so easy to just have a figure just be lopsided and just not look yeah, proportionate. Exactly. Well, I don't want a figure to look like a fucking mongoloid right. from Order of the Rings. Right. I want it to look like a human. I think exactly a human. for horror, Beto and ones do the best proportioning. Uh, some is accurate, some is just to the imagination, but it flows perfect. Yep. Right. What do you think? Yeah, like you're, you're, you're not going to take a... Uh, who am I thinking of specifically? Um, like you're not going to take a, try to do a custom Kane Hodder uh, figure and do it on a, a true tight narrow body. Right. Like, right. like that's not going to happen. You, right. you, you have to have right. some insight and skill into how these characters look. And I would imagine that ones and Beto are basically, you know, kind of sourcing whatever pictures they can find behind the scenes stuff, watching the films, um, and, and trying to figure out how they are going to basically <coughs> proportion them to the actor. Like, like one is <clears throat> incredible at, at, at proportioning his Kane Hodder figures. Right. I mean, he did a fucking awesome job on um, on this part four as well, as far as Ted, Ted White, who's the guy who plays Jason in fucking part four. Right, and, and right. Beto did a great job as well. Like I said, the silhouettes are pretty close, and, and, and there's differences in what they do. There, there's like like one one will custom mold like pieces and actually attach them to the body, and then you have fucking Beto who, who will sometimes use like fat suits and padding and shit around in there. I think does Beto has Beto custom sculpted stuff to go on bodies as well. Yeah, part three, part the, three, he's done that as well. The neck, the, but the neck. That, but that's part of the head sculpt though. But it goes on to the thing, yeah. kind of like how he did the remake, Jason. The mm -hmm. head sculpt you have, remember the yeah. part nine. Toxic Crusader is a great example. Yeah, he, he sculpted bodies. the legs. Yeah. Absolutely. So again, arms you know, and shit. you um, can see both artists. You know, do some stuff. And not and not to um, not mean to cut you off, Chris, but no, uh, okay. I'm not gonna put any names out there. But I remember there was a person I used to talk to quite often that used to kind of like make fun of me, like, "Why do you talk about proportions? It's so stupid, menacing, and all this." But no, but it's important. But again, if it wasn't important, then why are there fat suits? Why does one make casted body pieces for the part seven? You know what I'm saying? Or why does someone even add sculpting onto a body in general? Why do we come in this hobby? We want accuracy. Yeah, we, yeah come on. We want yeah. you want a lifelike factor. If you're gonna do a skinny guy with a super fat head, that ain't gonna work. Right, right. Or if you got a figure that's wearing coveralls, but the waist is super narrow, right. the shoulders are super narrow or super wide, or the pants don't sit or flow. Like it basically doesn't look like a human. Um, sh um, that's the reason why. I shout out to uh, Chris Parmesan and his uh, hobo that he had, like that figure looked very lifelike. It looked like an actual human shrunk down in one sense right. because of the way that it was built and the clothing and all that. It, it didn't look like a doll, you know, so that, that can be the difference too, so. And finally guys, let's get into the head sculpts, then we'll get into the mask. So we are actually, we actually were ready to Yeah, let's talk about the mask. The mask, here we go. This is where it's gonna, <laughs> they're so varied. <laughs> this is where, let's go in the ring. Uh, we, we gotta get some flashback, we're gonna get some blowback, whatever. <laughs> let's go. And then, we don't, we don't give a fuck no more. Shit is just gonna roll the way it's gonna roll. <laughs> All right? Well, let's talk about uh, let's talk about the part four mask from Beto. Beto has two variants. He has the original run and he has the battle damage run. Um, the battle damage run mask, um, I, 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 I don't, I'm not really feeling it because. What about I, accuracy? Include the accuracy. Accuracy wise, that's why I'm not feeling it because I feel like it's a modified mask. I don't feel like it's an original creation, and I could be wrong, but. Um, You're saying it's modified from this one that we have here. It looks like it's modified from another figure run, and I could be completely wrong about that. Part six or something. Part six, Jason, whatever. It just doesn't look um, like I was expecting it to look. However, the original original run mask I do like a lot. Um, I like it better than the newest mask that was done. <clears throat> Even though I think the paint app on the newer mask is probably a little bit more accurate to the movie, depending on the lighting or whatever. But, um, but. One thing I have to say is that once kills the mask every single time that he does. sometimes that every single time it's always weathered nicely It fits very well and it looks the part. What do you guys think? What do you think? Dan? I honestly think that the uh, once part four mask on this release is you can't get better <clears throat> but like, Just simple as that. Just, just like shape it. just shape uh, the tonality of the paint and the the gloss of the mask, which is not many people fucking land. That mask was supposed to be a little bit glossy. And what's even scary is that that's not even technically a part four. That was an alter part like three. The, the run, once you guys are going to get the pieces out, is going to be a brand new mask. And this already looks the part, which that's that shows you a little bit of once custom tea. He wants to fucking fly. He wants to um, go the extra step and make a new mask. He doesn't just have to set up for that one. Chris. Exactly. 
So kind of piggybacking on what everyone's already talking about, like I, like I agree with Rob, you know, I think there is some kind of variation between the two masks from the, from the Battle Damage, the original set of the Part 4s to the new ones. I, I even was looking at his uh, Part uh, 4 Battle Damage review, and I, I think there are some similarities to the Part 6, because I, I, had, I had my phone up watching his video and I actually looked at the Part 6 masks, and it, it does kind of look like a, a, a modified Part 6, I, I, I have to agree with a. Uh, with Rob, I mean, we may. I mean, whether it is or it isn't, yeah. cut you off. It shouldn't be any resemblance. Whether it is or it's not, it should look like a straight part for a mask. Yeah, and we may be completely yeah. wrong, you know. Yeah. So it, it's just again two people's interpretation of what uh, of what we think we're seeing. Um, and then again, as far as what Dan was saying, you know, with the tonalities of, of the mask and the color, you know, how how one's color grades it, it, it really is very accurate. Um, you know, Beto's are probably maybe the differences there are maybe a, it's a little lighter of a mask. And like when you guys see my part four um, review when I try to upload it tonight, hopefully you'll I, I do screenshot the scene from the film and then Beto's mask and the mask they're accurate, but you will see there may be some changes in in, in the uh, in the actual color tone of it, which will, right. again would be expected. And, and I've talked about this in my videos before though, still doesn't necessarily mean it's inaccurate because again like and we're, we've been chatting about this in, in our Candyman run. Um, that you know when people make movies they shoot these things in film profiles so, so and then they color grade them in post-production so you'll never really know what the fuck things actually look like off screen because the, the colors complete completely fucking different in the movie whether he's in the bathroom or running through the fucking woods or he's about to kill somebody in the fucking shower you know like it, it's gonna look fucking different because uh, there, there are scenes in part four because I watched it fucking twice uh, over last weekend or the weekend prior when I picked up uh, my part four when I got it. And, and there are scenes in the film where Beto's mask looks spot the fuck on. And then, then there are scenes in the film where the color looks off. And, and again, it's like lighting, how they fucking shot the movie. So, right, you know, right. again, we're not saying that one is better fucking than the other. There are, there's differences and they all excel in some way. And, you know, this is what I have to say. I think this is going to be a good way to close it off. Particularly for Jason. These are the things that matter. The mask, the body proportions, 100%. And honestly, um, the grittiness of it. Right. That's what the they, that, that's what Jason is. So, right. ask yourself, do you guys want accuracy? Do you guys want that lifelike factor? Do you guys want this type of paint, that type of paint? So, when you guys get into these runs, that's what you need to apply. Yep. Especially how you want your Jason to look. Like I said, the accuracy. Those are what we judge our buys yeah. on. And uh, actually, we are kind of addicts because we buy them all. Yeah, we're psycho in this right. hobby, man. Yeah, right. we, could, we couldn't make a choice, but that's yeah. why yeah. we love them both. Yeah. We love them both. And, and with, J with Jason specifically, too, it's not like Freddy Krueger where it's Robert Englund in every fucking movie. You have a different actor just about almost in every Jason film, except for Hotter, who kind of took over, in my opinion, who's the definitive Jason, in my opinion. I agree, 100%. You know, 100% fucking Fuck the, the remake. Jason. Fuck Jason versus <laughs> But fucking, uh, you know, get Getting those body proportions down right is very important because I like each respective movie in their own right and each actor who plays it, whether it's fucking Ted White or fucking, uh, what's his name from part six, I, I can't remember his fucking name now, um, or uh, uh, CJ Graham actually. And uh, you know, getting those proportions right are key because it, it carries that figure, the presentation over it and it makes you look at it like, wow, uh, uh, the shelf presence is there, it, it's powerful. And this is the kind of how psycho we are in the custom hobby about this shit because it really fucking matters. It, 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 it does. Really and to pull, pulls us towards it. And to piggyback what uh, Dan and kind of Chris said, these are my closing thoughts, I guess, because we're wrapping things up. Uh, overall, again, we want to stress that this is not really um, like a comparison, quote unquote, or like which figure is better. Um, there are no fucking winners. There are no damn. winners. <laughs> the only winner color. is the collector because you get what you want. Right. Exactly. You have to make up your mind as a collector, which is what I've always done, even as a new. You, you, you see what you like. Don't let anyone else tell you what you like, and you roll with it. Simple as that. Now, this is what I want to say. Little message to ones in Beto. What Jason do you want tackled by them that hasn't been tackled yet? Go. Um, by Beto, I would like to see the part two Jason. That's probably the, the most significant one that I want to see. If I had to throw one more out there, even though there's a few others, I would like to see him uh, do a part seven. I would like to see how that comes And what out. would you like from ones? From ones, I would like to see... It's you've done them all, but... Uh, 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 Jason versus Freddy, the variant, because that's a very tall figure. Yeah. That's one. You get one. You get one, oh, son. Just that. You get yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> Chris. So one one from each? Yep. Oh, man. So, yeah, from, from Beto, I guess... A part seven, which I think is already in the works, from what I understand. And from one, it would probably have to be 
damn, I don't know. It, it has to be something that has, he hasn't tackled yet, right? Yeah. You know, maybe maybe a proper part two, or actually maybe even a. Uh, so he does kid Jasons, yeah. but one, if you're if you're listening to this, and I know, and again, I know that it's going to be hard to do this, but a, a, a young kid Jason, uh, I guess theoretically would have some interpretation, you know, based on it because in the first film you only see him half up because right, he's in the right, water right. or whatnot. Uh, so it's still going to have some interpretation, but I would love to see some kind of seamless body, a seamless body yeah. version of him. And um, for me, and for me, I would have to say from me though, <laughs> a part eight Jason, absolutely, mm. and uh, from one's an Uber Jason, from Jason X. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I've always yeah, been asking. True. Come on! You know what? I wouldn't even mind a fucking... Uh, Jason X regular version? A Jason X regular version from the fucking film too though, actually. That's in the works. Yeah. See, there we go. Oh, 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 Spoiled shit. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, I've been your host, Daniel Terzo, and these have been my co-hosts. Rob, Anomaly, one. Chris, I am Toys. And uh, we got a bunch of shit coming your way, so please subscribe to his channel. I got the links in the description. Please subscribe to Chris, I am Toys. I got his channel in the description, and I mentioned your channel, Anomaly682. Right. And uh, subscribe and hit the bell, and as always, keep on the lookout for the next review. Yep. Stay sick, copy your own collection. Peace. Peace. Peace.